Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short, so glad to have you along with us today as we get to the Word of God. And we're talking today about making good decisions. I hope you are making good decisions. One good decision will be to stick with us now for the next 15 minutes as we talk about God's Word and pray over it and ask God to give us the wisdom that enables us to make good decisions. Remember the other day we talked about how there's bad decisions, there's good decisions, and there's excellent decisions. And sometimes the enemy of the excellent is the good. Satan may not tempt you with something that's really evil, but he might tempt you to do second best or third best when God has something far better for you. And so we want to aim high. We want to aim to be the very best God has for us. So let's get right into it. We've been, the verse that has helped us the last couple of days in decision making comes from Philippians chapter 1, where Paul prays for the Philippians. I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. I'd like to talk today about the idea of discernment. <clears throat> What does that mean? Discernment means being able to distinguish between what's good and what's good and bad, what's right and wrong, what's good and better. Discernment, the real knowledge talks about obedience to God's word, but discernment has to do with application, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, being able to make appropriate judgments, which I might add, in a culture that tells us not to make judgments, Discernment can be hard. <clears throat> discernment can be challenging. How do you make good judgments of what is right, what is wrong? Look at what the writer of the Hebrews speaks to the Hebrews, and he says that you should you should be more you, you should be having solid food by now. But I've got to give you milk again. You're still young. But he says solid food is for the mature. And notice how he describes a mature person, a spiritually mature person who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Now that's interesting. The, the implication here is that the younger we are in the Lord, or maybe even not yet saved, not having the Holy Spirit, and not living a life of obedience to God yet, causes us to have less discernment. If you're new or young in the faith, this is one reason that you ought to, shall we say, give due respect to those who are more veterans in the faith. They just might, might have more discernment about what's right and wrong than you do because they've had longer practice and their senses have been trained. They've been retrained, shall we say. And so sometimes I might add that, you know, like children growing up, uh, younger people in the faith, Sometimes we can demand, explain to me why something is wrong. And sometimes that older, per, that parent or that more veteran Christian can't quite put their words into words exactly why, but they just have in their spirit, they sense there's something not right about this. And if that's the case, don't push them to have to articulate what's right and wrong. Don't make them have to put it into words because they might just have a sense in their spirit there's something just not right here. Respect that. Honor that. Their conscience has been trained through obedience. Their conscience has been enlarged through their walking with God. And the Holy Spirit might be telling them something and giving them discernment that even if they can't put it into words, it still ought to be listened to and respected. It's very important. Likewise, as you're, if you are one of those veterans... Obviously, we want to learn how to articulate right and wrong, articulate why something is good or not good, but uh, listen to your conscience. Listen to that, just that the quiet voice within you that's, that's just, if you don't have peace about something, if something just doesn't feel right, listen to that. Don't demand that you've got to explain it. Back when we talked about a conscience a couple months ago, Remember, I, I shared how in my own life, some of the biggest mistakes I made, have made in life, was when my mind and logic had an argument with my conscience. Usually when I enter into that argument, my mind or my logic prevails. 
but my conscience was right. And so we want to listen to our conscience and the discernment that comes from a trained, um, a trained the practice of walking with God. Now, there's an old story told about the, you know, when you talk about how do you gain discernment, there's an old story told about the, the um, young businessman, and he was speaking to the old businessman who was far more successful. And he asked him, how did you become so successful? What's the key to your success? And the older, more successful man said, good decisions, good decisions, good decisions. And the young learner asked, well, what is the key to making good decisions? The older man responded, experience, experience, experience. Not to, not, still looking for a better answer, he said, well, then what's the key to gaining good experience? The older man replied, bad decisions, bad decisions, bad decisions. And so the point being, we ought to learn from our decisions. Discernment comes from having a good understanding of who you are and being able to adequately process how you've lived your life and the decisions you've made in the past. Understand something. Everybody makes bad decisions in life. Everybody makes bad decisions in life. It's part of who we are as humans. You can't get beyond it. When we were recently in our Faith Walkers Conference, I think I mentioned a story, but I'll repeat it there. You know, we have people from the South come who aren't used to be uh, cold, icy conditions. And there was a little lake there where, we, where our conference was, and some of the younger people were out walking on the icy lake, on the ice, and, it wasn't, and the ice broke, and some of them, I guess, fell in. And it's like us in the north, that we said, that's how people die. That's how, pe that, how in the world do you walk on an icy lake? But see, I, I asked before I brought this up, I asked at our conference before I mentioned how that's not a good decision. I, I asked if you've ever, when you were younger, made a bad decision that look, you look back on now and you say, how could I have been such a bonehead? How could I have been so stupid? And it really could have got you in danger. Would you stand up? The whole room stood up. Everybody. And I would have to stand up more than once because as a younger boy, boy, I sure made some, I'm lucky to be alive some of the dumb decisions I made. But understand something about decision making and, and about making mistakes. There are three types of people in the world. One is a fool. And Proverbs makes it real clear that a fool makes mistakes and he doesn't learn from them. So he just keeps right on making the same mistake over and over again and over again. He never learns. He never grows. And he just gets stuck in the same mistake. And then the scripture talks about a righteous man. A righteous man. Maybe we'd want to call him a, a, uh, a, a wise man, a righteous man. It says he falls seven times and rises again. So he learns from his mistakes. He gets back up. He, he doesn't keep repeating himself. And wise people learn from their mistakes. It's a wise person who understands his way, who knows what he's doing, who can process information, who's wise enough to say, well, why did I make that mistake? Look at my situation here. It's not good. And rather than blame someone else, <clears throat> he has a discernment and the wisdom to be able to look at his own life and say, this is where I got off track. This is where I did what's wrong. I'm going to correct it. That's a wise person. Be a wise person. Don't be a foolish person. Don't keep making them same mistakes and, and without processing, understanding where you, got, where you went wrong. But then there's also what we'd call a really wise person. And the psalmist in Psalm 119 writes, I have more insight than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. A really wise person is someone who learns from the, from the mistakes of others. Notice the three types again. A fool does not learn from them. They make mistakes and they don't learn from them. A wise man makes mistakes, but he learns from them. And so he doesn't keep repeating the same mistake over and over again. <clears throat> but a really wise person learns from the mistakes of others. 
A really wise person meditates on the testimonies of others. He looks at the life of others. He observes others. Can I tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, when I think of the Bible and the scripture about having wisdom and insight from meditating on the testimonies of God, in the scripture, there's somebody who makes every mistake you could possibly make. I just, I just, as I think about the Bible, that every mistake I could make, there's someone in the Bible who made it. And I can learn from those testimonies. Take David, a man after God's own heart. And yet there he was, looked at Bathsheba, and he should have stopped looking, and he'd looked too long, and then he acted on his lust. Got him in big, 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 big trouble. A person could learn from that. A person could look at David and say, wow. If a guy like David, a man after God's own heart, a man who's spoken of so highly in Scripture, could do such a, make such a big, big mistake and sin, I should learn from that. I should guard my eyes. I should make sure I don't gaze upon someone I shouldn't be looking at. I should make sure that I nip it in the bud right away. I don't look that second time, that third time. And indeed, a lot of people could save themselves a lot of trouble if instead of, of, of failing, if instead of they could save themselves a lot of mistakes and bad decisions if they get in the Word of God and learn from the testimonies there. You learn in the Scripture that, that sin doesn't work. Righteousness does. The world will tell you otherwise because initially, lots of times, it looks like the righteous person isn't getting ahead and the sinner is. But the scripture gives us testimonies about the end game, where it, where it leads to, what, what seed you sowed, and what was reaped as a result of that. So my friends, do you want to have discernment? Well, it takes practice. It takes learning. It takes experience. It takes time. Don't be a fool that never learns from your mistakes. Be a wise man. That when you do something wrong or if you're in the wrong course, don't blame others. Don't look for someone else. How, what could I have done different? How can I do different in this situation in the future? Best of all, be a really wise person. Meditate on the, on the testimonies God has given us in Scripture. Learn from the mistakes of others. God's Word is written for our encouragement, our help, our ability to walk uprightly. Get in it. Learn from it. And you'll live You'll, you'll gain discernment and live a wise life and make good decisions. Amen? Father in heaven, we bless you today. We thank you for life that we live. We confess, Lord, that we've all made really dumb, bonehead decisions in life. We've all done things we regret and wish we could take back. I pray, though, Lord, that we would be wise and learn from our mistakes. I pray that we would claim your forgiveness, claim your power, get up like a righteous man who rises again, and that we walk with you in victory. I pray, Lord, we'd not be constantly beating ourselves up and hating ourselves and discouraged because of mistakes that we've made in the past. Can't change now, but I pray you'd give us an attitude in the future that we're going to be wiser, more discerning. We're going to make better decisions in the future. We're not going to repeat the same mistakes. And we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God that gives us great insight so we might even avoid them altogether. We pray for our children and grandchildren. We pray for those who are earlier in life, Lord. Give them great discernment and understanding. Uh, help them learn from Help our children be teachable and learning so they don't repeat the same mistakes we made. And help them to learn from the Scripture so they don't repeat the same mistakes the great people of Scripture made. We thank you and bless you. We give you this day. We pray that we would pursue the things that are excellent, and I pray we'd make good decisions for your glory, and that, that would help our lives be all you intended to be. And we pray it in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey folks, thanks for being with us. Isn't the Bible awesome? That's why we get here every day, read it, study it, and pray over it. I hope you'll join us every day. If you're new today, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, like the video, introduce yourself. To those of you here every day, you know I love you. So glad to have the privilege and opportunity to sow the Word of God into your life. So until we meet tomorrow, might God strengthen you, bless you, fill you with grace, wisdom, and discernment so you'll make excellent decisions. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Bye-bye.